Hi guys. Um, one of my subscribers asked me for uh, information about the spirits that uh, I took many photos of and that they were the ones that guided me to come to the Amazon area in Peru. Um, I have some photos. So this is this is some a little synopsis of the uh, different spirits that we had uh, in 2008. Um, started in 2007 and finished in 2009. So for um, most of 2008 I took thousands of photos of spirits everywhere around where I lived and um, yeah and this is in 2009 and this was kind of like a, a goodbye from the spirits. I'm here with uh, hundreds of spirits uh, for beings or photos of them. Um, they all disappeared later on. This is like a kind of a, a goodbye that they said to me. Um, how did it start? Um, it started uh, quite a long time ago, actually. It started in uh, um, when I was about 14, and that was uh, and that was more than 40 years before that. So, um, so at that time, I had uh, a spirit that came to me from South America. Um, and uh, I didn't really know anything about it. He was talking to me every night and uh, I found it, um, yeah, kind of interesting. Um, but uh, after a little while, um, it, it brought um, a sort of a, a conflict in me that I couldn't handle the energy at the time. And um, the doctor called it a nervous breakdown. Um, but later on, I, uh, when I was 2005, uh, he came back very, very strongly to me, and so it was 42 years later. Um, I've been able to hold it off while I was raising my children, and um, but still it was always sort of there in the background. When in 2005 I made another drawing of him. Uh, this is a drawing of him. Um, I made many drawings of spirits, and I think that often the spirit energy have a white line around it somehow. That seems to be... Uh, all my information is channeled, so... Um, and that is what I uh, presume from that, the white line around things. And you see it on some of the native drawings that they have white lines around their pictures. And I think that, that is, those are spirit stories. So uh, anyway, this spirit called itself Nogestek and he said he was from a past life with me um, uh, 19,000 years ago. So that's a long time. And it was extremely traumatic. It, it started to slowly reveal itself to me over 2005 during the whole year. I had many, many um, um, instances where, where this um, came to me again and again. And I made notes of it and wrote it into a book which I later on called The Lemurian Vortex. And um, yeah, it's a, it, it's a personally published book. Um, because the publishing companies thought it was too outrageous. Um, but, um, well, it was the truth for me, and, uh, and it was certainly not drug-induced or, or uh, in an unbalanced state. It was very much in a, in a considered state. Um, and uh, over the whole year, um, these occurrences started to happen more and more. And it had to do with... Um, the spirits of Lemuria being trapped in a in a in a vortex, um, uh, so they couldn't uh, reincarnate into the physical world, and these uh, spirits uh, were kind of calling for me to to set them free, and I was given specific instructions uh, in my intuition uh, diary writing kind of work, um, where and my dreaming work, I was given specific instructions on how to do it. And I also had a couple of people who um, were drawn into this particular happening, uh, two men who were seers, and they rang me regularly about information that they received, and it usually was corroborative of what I had received already. So that was a big help, because at that time I started to feel that um, it was just too outrageous, or maybe I was crazy, maybe I was losing it. It was a very difficult time for me and for my family, who uh, also really didn't understand what was going on. So um, this went on uh, during the whole of the year, and at the end of the year I ended up having um, 
being called to actually set them free, which was um, something very strange. For about a week, I was in and out of my body um, or a different type of dimensions. This was all natural. I never took any drugs. I hadn't been taking drugs for over 40 years, uh, not even marijuana, no alcohol. Um, uh, I just been following my master, Meher Baba, and doing my prayers and meditation and doing uh, the bhakti yoga that he advises for us to do, which is service in love. And I was looking after dying people for that time, uh, earning a bit of money on the side of looking after my family uh, by um, a a looking after these people uh, on a private basis and uh, helping them to organize their life before they were dying. So uh, I did that for about six years. And then after that, this uh, spirit finally kind of um, this spirit, Nohostek, got himself very strongly um, into my life and started to give me a lot of um, connection and instructions. And I tried to uh, not reject it because it was so strong. I felt that if I did reject it, I was rejecting an important part of my, of my destiny or my life. Um, so I tried to give it a place, but it was extremely difficult to give it a proper place. And the best place for me was my diary and later on the book that I wrote about it. So um, during that time, I, um, uh, I also channeled um, landscapes and later on I was, uh, and I made drawings of them, paintings of them, and um, later on I was in, uh, shown exactly where to look on the map. And uh, when I looked on the map there at a particular indicated place and took, uh, downloaded uh, satellite photos of that place, it was exactly the same as my drawing. So I feel that that was the indication of, um, of where it all happened. And that was somewhere in the south of Paraguay. Um, <clears throat> I've never been there uh, in the physical body, but I was taken there in the psychic body after a, a while of being in these different dimensions for about a week, in which I really um, basically lost touch with normal life and uh, spent a lot of time in my room uh, and my artwork doing um, a strange sort of meditation trying to prepare for the work that was given to me. Um, then at the end of that I was taken out of my body and taken to this place um, in South America where I had to set these people free with a crystal rod which was a crystal rod from the other side it was not a physical crystal rod and uh, I, I had to cut four layers of it and um, the strange thing was also that every time um, I went to the toilet in that time, I w it would fall on the floor in the in the bathroom, and four times I bashed my head uh, on the concrete tiles, uh, which um, resulted in my head being all swollen and bruised. Um, and at the end of it, I um, was my spirit was released, and I came back into my body and I realized that my body was in a very bad state and I was kind of dying. Um, I rang my family for support, I rang my daughter for support. Uh, she came from a long way to go and support me and help me to go to the hospital and um, get some emergency care. Where I stayed for 10 day days, um, I suddenly had developed a very uh, strange lung illness and lung infection, and um, which I hadn't had before. And, uh, and the doctors didn't know what to make of it. Um, several uh, health professionals were sent to me for uh, interviews, um, trying to work out what was wrong with me. And uh, every time I gave them the same story and they couldn't work it out, but in the end they decided that since I was able to, you know, take myself to the toilet and cook a meal and, and look after the family a little bit, I was uh, well enough to return to my home and I didn't have to be put in a health care, um, mental health care facility. So uh, that was a relief. Um, <laughs> I was really worried about that. Um, but uh, the spirits um, then after that, um, when I became stronger again, um, urged me to come to South America. And that was a difficult decision. Um, just before I went to South America, I um, painted this painting. Um, which I later identified as the actual plant of ayahuasca and that is what I was going to work with in the next 12 years. So um, 
I also made dream catchers um, in the la in the following years, uh, which were um, kind of like pictures of spirits as well, and uh, were supposed to help us get our life a bit more organized. <coughs> And here's another little picture. I don't know if it will translate on the on the video very well. Um, it's a it's a photo that I made. Um, a person took a shot of me, um, like an automatic shot, and uh, and instead of of me, it focused on the spirit that was in the middle of me and that camera. And uh, if that spirit has no density at all, then the camera cannot uh, detect it and wouldn't take any photo of it and focus on it you know so it's pretty amazing that um, instead of focusing on me it focused on this spirit which is rather a beautiful one um, uh, in that time other people also took photos of spirit balls around me and um, uh, you often see them on photos of people having um, fiestas or feasts or parties um, they seem to enjoy that they seem to come in for birthday parties and for um, festivals um, the spirits like to be part of that and do the dancing and the joy if if that is what's available um, so um, our, our life is really uh, kind of monitored and supported um, with spirit activity and not only human deceased spirits but also um, plant spirits like the ayahuasca spirit that I painted here um, I didn't know at the time of ayahuasca I had never heard of it when I painted this, um, I felt the presence of it very strongly. It's got an eye there on the top there, and it's very much uh, what ayahuasca does. It's a vine that grows up in that curly kind of way that this is de depicted. And, um, and it um, awakens the third eye, so it actually allows you to see things in a very different way than you normally see things. And that is, that is kind of the healing aspect of ayahuasca, because it awakens your higher consciousness and uh, you become aware of many things from a very different point of view. So from a unified point of view, so you don't actually think of things as me and them or uh, victims and aggressors, um, but as a huge process that we're all part of um, in this great adventure that is called life. So here is my um, my little story about the, the, the spirits. Here they here they came about three years after this um, uh, incident where I had to set them free, and I feel that these were the ones that uh, came to say goodbye to me. They they woke me up out of bed, and they made me take photos of them. And I took about a hundred photos that that night or that very early morning. Um, they all came up very clear. This is one of the better ones. Um, Normally when you take a photo of these spirit balls, they go away, the next photo you can't see them. But these were staying here and they were telling me that they were going to reincarnate and find new lives and that they were from the Lemurian Vortex people. So take it as a story, take it for real, I don't know. I, I really, uh, for me it's been very uh, real in my life and uh, many times I've been made aware of new children or new situations which still relate to that particular episode in history when uh, we went into a very dark time that we are now uh, coming out of. Okay, thank you for listening and uh, all the best and happy uh, festive days for uh, Christmas and New Year. Bye-bye.